Americans. Not private in interests or egos. Hope that democracy is understood as a concept that encompasses all living things and the resources that support them. Hope that people do not treat nature, ecosystems, living beings, any life as commodities. Hope that we realize we do not own elephants, giraffes, whales, fish, bears, pigs, red-tailed hawks, oak trees, deer, a rusted patch bumblebee, or the large flowered pedestamen. Hope that everyone understands that plants, animals, and fungus in Belbo are not objects, but are animate subjects, living beings that want to live. Who can honestly claim ownership of all the living beings in Belbo Prairie or any living beings? Frankly, the concept reflects human arrogance and the false notion of dominion. We can measure the economic gain of a new cargo area at a local airport, but what is the price of a virgin prairie? George Fell, a Rockford native and naturalist, alluded to the answer when he said, nothing becomes valuable until it becomes rare. If that statement holds a seed of truth, then the species of Bell Bull Prairie and the millions of other species that are threatened and endangered are priceless. Hope that the old tired arguments in the name of development, the apathetic foregone conclusion that humans are inherently greedy or destructive is seen for what it is, a simple illusion. All of us are evidence to the contrary. Hope, sadly, did not save the northern white rhino that went extinct six years ago. Few humans would rejoice in the extinction of rhinos, elephants, whales, gorillas, bears, or giraffes. Yet endangered and threatened species and an endangered ecosystem exist in Rockford. I hope that we seize the opportunity to be compassionate and not blindly ravage that which we cannot replace. I hope that in the near future, we do not have to talk about conservation because conservation will be the common paradigm, the way every human lives. I hope that everyone understands that endangered does not mean extinct, only that our work is not done. I hope that the word extinction when referring to other species becomes extinct. We may be talking about rusted patch bumblebees or the large flowered pentstemon today, but what will we be talking about tomorrow? What species is on the block next? Where and when do we draw the line that so desperately needs to be drawn? What will be left and what will be the gain in the name of development for the sake of humanity? Which humans gain while most humans suffer? Nelson Mandela said, may your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. My hope is that no one fears respecting other species, standing up for those that do not look or live like us or speak our language. My hope is that choices will be based in the context of the overall quality of life for humanity on the planet. My hope is that mutual respect and dignity is afforded to all life, our brethren that we share the planet, including all the unique species in Belbo Prairie. Lastly, my hope is that the people who already know all of this, all of you, will have the courage, stamina, and fortitude to continue to work for equity and justice zealously for all life and nature on our shared planet. Thanks for the time. Very good. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Very nice, Anthony. Were you going to be submitting that to papers as an op-ed? Um, yes, <laughs> I could submit <laughs> that one. I've already, every time I speak to the board, and even before I spoke to the board the first time, um, I already turned everything I say into op-eds, and they've been published in the Daily Herald, Herald a couple of different times. What I said last week, I'll submit, and I'll submit this hope as well, or I'll submit the hope first, either way. Um, I think that a good title for it would be Hope and the False Notion of Dominion. Um, I thought that that was a really good... Okay. I'm writing it down, Rob. Good, good line. Um, <laughs> yes. That was just lovely, because uh, it wasn't like uh loosey goosey hope it was like urgent hope it was hope that had a lot of high stakes um and uh yeah it wasn't um hippy dippy loosey goosey uh <laughs> i don't know why i like rhyming no, it, but it's, it's beautiful i i understand what you're saying yeah good and even <laughs> because i said hope so many times that's why i went to something a little bit more grittier last week with the airport board 
what, how, what, what does gritty mean? Grittier meaning a little bit more, um, I didn't want them to think we were all just a bunch of hippie people running around by saying hope so many times. Sure, yeah. I, want, I wanted to say something a little bit more sound, deliberate sounding towards what's at stake. And that all eyeballs are now watching Rockford, seeing that tens of thousands of people around the world know about this. It's been published well over 100, I counted 160 publications across the nation. So it's, it's out there and people are watching, so. Yeah, uh, really well done. You, uh, you should start every meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I'd was a be great happy recap. to <laughs> it was a great it was a great recap too like um it was a really good sort of like way of looking at the whole shebang um thank you so much for doing that and all that you've done for this um yeah, everyone's done so much work for Bilbo um yes. and 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 that's where when Kim invited me last week it would have been inconvenient but I said I'm I'm, this, I'm deep. I'm this deep. You're pot committed. <laughs> I'm committed. I'm going. I said right away. Yeah. I said, let me work out a few things and I'll be there and I'll say something. So well, thank you. And thank all of you as well for, uh, for all the hard work and continued work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, it's a really great way to start something off where we're going to be talking about legal updates and things like that. Um, but uh, is that the next agenda item, Jillian? Yes, it is. I'll go back to sharing my screen. Um, so, yeah, someone uh, had just asked me over email, does the lawsuit stop construction indefinitely? And so I think that's a good question to start with the legal update. Um, Carrie, are you able to clue us in? Sure. Um, so the lawsuit uh, goes hand in hand with an injunction to stop. And we had to give a 60 day notice according to the law to the federal agencies that we were gonna sue. So that's gonna be up very soon. So the lawsuit will be submitted. So we're kind of starting again uh, with a different court in the Seventh Circuit, which is great for us uh, because it takes it, it takes it out of Rockford and into Chicago. Um, so we feel that the judges there will be um, uh, less invested in their friendship with um, the airport's lawyers. Um, but we also have to do an injunction, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the injunction uh, also is, I would say it's kind of an, a cease and desist notice. So that but it would happen before they start. So it's really not a cease, it's like a desist. Um, and that would only be good until there was a ruling by the judge. That will also be in the Seventh Circuit in Chicago. So that's a more immediate thing that happens. Like uh, it's the injunction is filed and then they have like, I don't know, a couple of days to rule on it. Um, and they can't do anything before the ruling. Now, if there is a ruling that they can go forward, then that would be a disaster. But because we have this lawsuit going forward, the judges would probably say, yes, we're gonna approve the injunction until we understand what's happening with this lawsuit. So it's all a little bit of a crapshoot, I'm sorry to say. Um, so we're kind of at the mercy of the courts at the moment. And one of the things that we can celebrate is that the prairie is still here. Um, and what Jillian, I, excuse me, what um, Samantha and Amy talked about 
at the Wild Ones Conference, uh, they talked about how the Endangered Species Act really doesn't give us the level of protection that we need in the 21st century for all of the 21st century challenges that we have. So it, it's going to, it would be an incredible uphill battle to try and change the law. But what we wanna take a look at in earnest is changing the administrative rules around the Endangered Species Act, around the state Illinois Department of Natural Resources process for consultation. Um, so those are two things that we're gonna be working on in the future, no matter what the decision is. Um, so at the moment, the airport is not gonna do anything until they get the final FAA approval. Uh, and that has not yet been forthcoming. Also, we don't know what the FAA is gonna say, but if they do say, okay, go ahead and, and do the work, um, the airport has said in court that they will give us notice uh, before they do anything so that we would then be able to file the injunction and if they don't do that, they would be in contempt of court, which I don't think they want to be. So the lawsuit, um, actually, that's kind of a mistake. The lawsuit has not been refiled. We have sent the letter of 60-day notice, and we sent that in the middle of January. So just in a couple of weeks, we will be refiling the lawsuit in the Seventh Circuit. Then. The airport board passed a resolution at their last meeting approving uh, an engineering contract with Crawford, Murphy, and Tilly to do some design engineering for midfield access improvements. Well, that's a very vague and general thing. So we have, I think Amy has submitted on that, Carrie. Pardon? We I do, do have an update. update on that. Yeah. Okay. So Something Amy submitted right. a FOIA and she's going to give you an update on what that is. Go ahead, Amy. So we did get a response. So as Carrie mentioned, there was a resolution on the agenda at the airport board meeting that was very vague. It said they, as, as your screen says, they were going to approve a design phase engineering agreement with Crawford, Murphy, and Tilly. That's the engineering firm they use for all of their design work. And it was for uh, midfield access improvements. It was on the agenda last week, so February 23rd. Um, so uh, we sent a FOIA request to get any additional language from the resolution and a copy of the engineering agreement. Late in the day yesterday, we received a copy of the engineering agreement. It is signed and dated August 5th, 2021. Um, when I questioned why we were receiving something from two years ago, a year and a half ago, um, and the resolution was passed in 2023. We were told they were just cleaning up. It was just a formality because they realized they had never passed the resolution authorizing uh, the, this agreement uh, with CMT for the original work um, that was done. So the so the there is no update. They're not doing a there. It's not a new agreement. It's simply a new resolution authorizing them to sign the agreement that they signed in August of 2021. Oh, well, that's disappointing. But what's also interesting about this is that in July of 2021, they authorized, there was a resolution in July of 2021, um, awarding, authorizing them to award a contract to Northern Illinois Services to build the road. And then in August, they have the agreement with CMT. So it's, again, this is a, it's just a lack of transparency and um, really just, it's, it's, it's a sloppy way of doing business. Now that people are looking, they're going back and kind of cleaning up the way that they did it. And we don't know whether that was illegal or if it was just against their own sort of the, the way that they say they're doing things, right? Yeah, it's probably just an internal 
uh, rule or guideline that says, but they're, they, uh, the chairman of the board and the vice chair of the board, Paul Cicero and Tom Myers did sign the agreement in August of 2021. And there was no resolution authorizing them to sign it, but now there is. Wow. Okay. So I called the design firm and emailed them telling them, did you know that you um, were kind or you were, you, you were authorized to do something that was uh, not authorized by the full board. And they didn't even know what it was when asked about it. Um, there's been no response. And I also sent a version of that to the FAA and Amy sent it to the person who answers our emails in the governor's office. Um, but it's, it calls attention to the sloppiness of the process and the way in which they are only pretending at some sort of like public uh, participation in any of this. Um, and so that talking point could be used in further communications that anyone uses uh, towards the various elected officials that we're going to be um, contacting today. Is there anything else about that thing? I don't I, have any updates on it. No, I think I think we do need to um, make a point of this, mm -hmm. of letting people know how this is part of their sloppiness. But that could be a problem that they did all this work without being authorized. I, but I think we should check with our attorneys. On, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can Amy and um, Rob, can you send me copies of your emails? Yes. Yeah. You know, I noticed other sloppy things when I was. Uh, at this Tyler Smith, when I was at the board meeting, do you remember when they canceled one and then they uh, announced that they really didn't have anything important? But then at the very next meeting, they were passing resolution after resolution that had to do with contracts that, that probably had already started because some of it was for snow and it was, you know, uh, I think they, the same thing happened at that meeting where they didn't do anything, but yet they kind of wink, wink to the contractor and said, we're going to go with this. And even though it's not been officially approved, it will be at our next meeting. I think the kind of the message about, about all of this is that it it's, this isn't, there are, there are rules and guidelines in place about how our government is supposed to work. And the airport board seems to be forgetting that they, they are a government entity and that's this is not how government works it doesn't operate it's not supposed to operate in the shadows or with wink wink or cleaning things up after the fact that's not how government works so yeah this is good fodder for the lawyers we'll make sure that you have that carry um it is Definitely, we're we're talking about putting together some kind of press release, uh, or at least notice to the journalists who've been covering this. Um, that sort of outlines all of the things the airport has done that is wrong or shady. Um, I think the larger message that we want, sort of like the higher ups in the state government to acknowledge is the fact that this airport board and this airport staff have way too much power with almost no oversight. Um, and with all this power and no oversight, they are uh, not only endangering this super rare ecosystem, but there's a, there's a long list of things that they've done that are uh, shady or wrong, um, hurtful. Yeah, it is abusing the public trust. It, it, it diminishes, it diminishes all public office um and so yeah uh rob this is anthony it, it this sounds like a, a some sort of investigative reporter should take this yes if and you like, know turn, turn this about. into an, a story an expose of some sort i agree 
and we and we've been looking at trying to like get some of the journalists that we know to bite um but i'm not sure any of the one of them said like i, I don't really do this kind of uh this kind of journalism um and so if you know of any investigative journalists i think we could put together and and, and i would love we would all love help putting together all of like digging in the files what are all of the um aspects of this that are fishy and wrong and really trying to call attention to, to the things that are uh the grossest um i think sometimes too we well anyway all that to say yes uh i think you're right okay i'll, I'll throw it out there and so one of the things that we're doing tonight is we're trying to uh spend the rest of the time we have together um doing actions uh so like making this a working meeting um because the updates are a little bit lighter but the crunch time is getting tighter um sorry i didn't mean to make that rhyme uh we wanted to make sure that we use this time together productively and so um we have a few folks that we know in the governor's office are supposed to be working on this um they are the deputy governors christian mitchell and andy menar um we have been told before that a politician is much more likely to respond to public comments um so things like twitter and facebook um because that is more uh you know it's it's public it's it's not a private message we we didn't even know that the, the governor's office had been listening to us until i don't know a couple of months ago uh, when they said we got like how many thousands of letters and, and contacts was it amy it, it was i mean it was it was like five or six thousand um emails and then they also received postcards uh well over a thousand postcards so um they received a lot i mean it's yeah they didn't and give they, me the number <laughs> but they're keeping track i wrote yes. Chris sir, and i it was tom burke I wrote Prisker and I got a generic email reply back that nothing to do with the topic that I wrote about saving Belleville Prairie. It's about like child care or something like that. Totally unrelated form letter. Yeah, I never got any sort of response in my sort of like, please just give me a, a standard response, citizen. I, I've been getting the same response from Durbin's office for forever that has like incorrect information in it. And so, um, yeah, I think that it's uh it's hard but we also know that like these kinds of things do matter and they do pile up and so um yeah the, these are suggestions uh of things that we would love for you to do now um i don't know maybe we could play some music or something uh because I, I i could just keep talking the whole time but then i think everyone would be hypnotized by my beautiful voice um we do have an entry or an entree uh, into Durban staff. Um, and they have stopped answering our uh, messages. They canceled a meeting with with uh, Amy and Carrie and then um, haven't responded since. And so they, they might be done with us, but we're not done with them. Um, so, yeah. And I'll put the link to this Google slide in the chat so that you guys can like copy and paste stuff. Um, and there's also one more slide with some federal contact information too, but I will stop sharing for a moment so that I can get that in the chat and we can all start getting to work. And so when you, if you use social media, if you use Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, using the hash, hashtag Save Belleville Prairie um, helps link it all, and then it also helps the uh, Save Belleville Prairie accounts be able to like retweet and things like that. If you don't use any of those social media things, your life must be awesome uh, and just full of uh, so much less uh, ugliness. But um, emails are really, really important. Writing a, a handwritten letter is super important, and so if you have stationery next to you right now. Um, I will send you a check for the postage. Um, we uh, we would love for us to spend this time doing this work and I should stop talking so we can do that. Um, 
do people have any questions or feel free to talk in the chat or, or on mute and, and we can help connect things as much as possible. But I just want to bombard these guys with words. Uh, I, I contacted uh, Sue Stevens at NIU and, and she's uh, approved uh, a statement on my perspective on Balboa Prairie. So I'm hoping to do that real soon. Great. And uh, unfortunately, I'm involved with Severs and Dallas. They're going through the same administrative malfeasance. It seems to be endemic in this county, this kind of cronyism that's been existing forever. So, yeah. Now it's hit Rockford like a plague. Yeah. So that's fun. Um, but I think that calls attention to the fact that this is about way more than Bell Bowl. Um, this is about the valuing of our natural spaces that are finite. Um, and Bell Bowl has become sort of the lie in the sand that I think a lot of people respond to. So um, feel free to use that in your messaging as well. And it, just so you know, it goes deeper than that. Without these natural areas, we don't have crops. We don't have, we can't grow. We can't do anything without natural areas. I mean, these pollinator, yeah. everything is contingent on having wild things, so. Yeah, even if you don't believe they deserve to exist in their own right, you will, won't exist <laughs> without yeah, them. Yeah. Um, great. Maybe, also, Anthony, um, people are asking for a Rob, copy of your thing. Yes. Can we go around and have people say what they're going to do? Um, how about people type in chat what they're going to do so we don't take a lot of time? Okay. All right. If you if each person types in chat what you're going to do, this is kind of a working meeting for us to uh, put something together. Uh, so Samantha is currently emailing. Um, Jillian's posting on Twitter. Uh, Samantha's e emailing the deputy governors. Uh, Linda says the Garden Club of Mount Pro Prospect is on this. Um, Kim is tweeting messages. Eddie, the bird freak, is writing a post on his website. Kathy Christensen, um, LTE, I don't know what that means, in Northwest Herald and the Woodstock Independent Twitter. Um, some folks are asking where the screen went with the addresses. Jillian posted that the link to it in chat so that you can copy and paste the addresses. Yeah, so if you click on the link in or, chat, there you go. it'll bring it up for you. Yeah. I'll put the link in again because I think some people have entered the meeting since I put it in and I can never remember. Craig is arranging my perspective on Belbo Prairie at WNIJ and DeKalb. Thanks for posting the link. And Amy's posting um, Tom McNamara, the mayor of Rockford, his email. So somebody could send it, or several people could send an email. Jerry's asking wild ones to write to Tom McNamara. Thanks, Jerry. And also we appreciate your recent donation to this effort from wild ones. Um, because that's something we're really struggling with. Our board um, would love to see more donations. We're looking for about $20,000 at the moment to help with the legal fees. Uh, Vito is saying he's a board member for the Illinois Prairie Path, and he's going to discuss with his board putting an article on their website. Um, he has a question that Rob can maybe answer. Uh, Christine is sending some tweets. Matt Evans um, says that Cheap Trick from Rockford is playing in Chicago on April 26th. And their song is I Want You to Want Bell Bowl Prairie. Uh, he tried to get in touch with them this summer. Maybe someone would know how to get in touch with them. Um, you know, I'm thinking, Kim, maybe one of our board members Rob Clark would maybe know how to get in touch with them. Uh, Samantha says that she's asking the wild ones in QC to write to the governor. Um, Linda is asking for contacts for Chicago Tonight and Chicago News, WBEZ. I think Kim can maybe share some of those. Uh, Cinesippi Audubon. 
Jennifer Kuroda uh, working on an album, The Sounds of Bell Bull Prairie, and a mural that was just approved. Um, what did you just post, Rob? Oh, the website? Yeah, and that's um, that should have a good overview for um, Vito so, at Lido. Yeah, so now we're asking people, okay, write your tweets right now. Uh, send your emails right now. Um, uh, let's let's keep this a um, a working meeting for a little bit here. And we can keep posting contacts and press. Keep posting your ideas. Linda is gonna contact the League of Women Voters in Arlington Heights and Lake Cook. Uh, Gemma is gonna do snail mail. Yes, snail mail is great. I think snail mail and cards and letters postcards, anything um, is really effective because they have something in their hand and it's not like an email they could just kind of gloss over. So I think snail mail, if you can do that, is awesome. Um, Matthew is asking about when the Rusty Patch Bumblebee foraging season begins. Well, officially, according to the US and Fish Wildlife, it's March 15th. And I think we are going to be having an April 15th kind of celebration again, welcoming the bees back to the prairie. Um, Christine is saying thank you for the suggested messages. Um, and if she could have a couple of bullet points about the latest on the airport's um, shady dealings. So, uh, Jillian, is that something you can put in chat? A couple of bullet points. Um, well, something from what I sent to the governor's office, or Rob, you could pull what you sent to the FAA. Yeah, yeah. you could put that on the on the chat for people to use. So, one of the reasons why we wanted to have this working meeting was we wanted to give people time in their busy schedules to be able to do some action items and really step up. Um, whether that's donating to the cause, whether that's writing snail mail, uh, emails, working with the groups that you're all partners of, like Audubon, um, the um, environmental club, the uh, garden groups, garden clubs, Whatever it is, I gave a talk on the Bell Bowl Prairie to the Garden Club of Rockford. They were very enthusiastic and gave a donation. So some of these garden clubs, like wild ones, I think uh, when you talk to them, you can ask them to do a donation. And I think that's still up on the website. Um, so Christine, I know you're dusting off your Twitter account and sending some tweets. Um, let's hope with what's going on with uh, Twitter that our tweets go through. So let's keep our uh, fingers crossed. I know they've just fired a whole bunch more people. Uh, emails and snail mails are good. Christine here, I am going to send snail mails too. I, I think those cards and cards and letters and the physical really, as you say, help a lot. They are awesome. The War Memorial Museum, the son is good friends with a curator for Cheap Trick. Oh, that's great, Gail. So Gail, um, maybe you can get us a contact uh, that you can let us know about. And maybe we could get Cheap Trick to come to our April 15th, uh, Welcome Back the Bees. Um, <laughs> That would be awesome. Um, I just put in chat the thing that I sent to the uh, FAA. Um, you can tweak it any way you want. It sort of outlines 
what happened and then i'm forwarding it to you carrie so that you can get it to the lawyer okay so if anybody wants that you can just copy and paste it and put it uh, in a word document or put it in an email to yourself that's what i often do with yes. stuff like this i copy it and i paste it in an email that i send to myself from uh zoom chats anybody else want to share what they're doing this is the the time we've tried to give you to really spend a little time on advocacy and making your voice heard um, so that our voice can swell to hundreds to thousands. And you can do more than one thing, of course. I will be going to Washington DC in April um, to speak to our legislators. Uh, so I'm planning a visit then. So I'll be there for four days meeting with legislators from all over the state of Illinois. Uh, this is Jerry Paulson. I just wanna say that there's was probably some kind of a written memorandum either from uh, Zach Oakley or from Mike Dunn to the board before they voted on that resolution explaining why what they were voting on because if there was no discussion in the public meeting there there had to have been a, a memo or some kind of secret meeting that wasn't noticed under the open meetings act Jerry thanks I just foiled that <laughs> But also it should be noted that they had, Paul, Paul asked one of the board members what they just voted on. And the board member was like, I don't know, talk to Zach Oakley. Um, and so that could have been the closed door meeting they had at the end of the session where then they explained what they just voted on. Accurately um, said, Rob, that's exactly what that board member, that commissioner said to me. Yeah. So, so they have an is, awful lot of they have an awful lot of closed door meetings that are illegal, I think. Having just you know done the Open Meetings Act training, I there is a very narrow um, band of what you can do under the open uh, in closed session. And talking about a contract is not what you do in closed session. I don't I don't think they've talked about the contract because I spoke to that commissioner three days later. Okay, so Linda is asking, should we send letters to all the members of the Rockford Council or the Rockford Airport? What do you suggest? Yes, I would suggest uh, choosing the Rockford Council and sending it to all the members of the council. Um, I I think the Rockford Airport board members are a lost cause, but if you want to send it to them, go ahead. And I like Melissa's idea of talking to her church and handing out postcards. So I did a talk mm. uh, this fall uh, at the Unitarian Church in Rockford. And after the service, uh, someone was there handing out the postcards and we got all the postcards signed uh, right after the service. So that's a great idea. Uh, so Linda's also saying, what is the donation used for? So the donation is used for lawyers, yes, but it's also used for other things. One of the things that we're doing is we're also trying to support Jillian and Rob uh, to get a paycheck to keep doing this work. Uh, that's really important. We're supporting things like um, doing, uh, paying for postcards and paying for stamps um what are the other things that we're paying for kim and amy uh, i'll say two. Prairie sidewalk signs or you know the the yard signs uh and then uh we've paid for some advertising in the past some money has gone for that uh sorry rob go ahead 
Well, we're what we're working on now too is creating a mailer um, that we're sending to thousands of people um, that will have action points on one side and then um, be a billboard type, but be like a yard sign that you can tape to your front window um, as a sort of like action. And it's, we're only sending these to folks in Winnebago County um, and and prioritizing the people who have already acted on behalf of the prairie in the past. Um, and so we're trying to do that as well, but that is going to also cost money. Um, and I think last I heard me and Jillian who work 10 hours a week are funded through the middle of March and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll still be trying. Yeah, these, to... these campaigns uh, require a lot of attention and effort uh, and materials for sure, as well as legal fees. That's one part of it. Um, so we're trying to split those um, donations that come in between us kind of to share, share it out. Okay, we've got three new message here. Um, Tyler knows of serious violations of the OMA that the airport authority has done. Um, yeah, maybe we can start compiling all of those things. So if you want to send some of those things to Rob, um, and he can take a look at that, but we, we need to have something but backing it, something behind it. Yeah, please, any anything that you guys, any, any dirt you all dig up on the airport, including violations of the Open Meetings Act, please send it to me. Um, I'm Robbie at friendsillnature.org. I'm putting that in chat. So I think Melissa said she had to go, but you know, when you pass on information to faith in place, um, we need to give people action items. So if you pass on information to any group that you know, you need to make sure that you give them a way to actually do something. Yeah. Uh, some of these violations I was talking about uh, date back like five or six years ago, my first dealings with the airport. So, but no, that's I mean, I was there with Isaac Guerrero, the reporter from the paper, and he could, uh, you know, I'll document it. Uh, absolutely, that that counts. Um, we're talking about stuff too, where uh, they lost all the medical records of the firemen at the airport who died from chemical exposure. Um, it's a. Uh, I feel like, yeah, an investigative journalist should be asking why, what, what is going wrong with the Rockford Airport, and what can be done about it if the elected officials aren't going to do anything about it yeah and we should include those things like the the uh firefighters and yeah. that's probably why they lost the agreement with nli Anthony, thank you. You've got uh, a contact at WPIX in New York uh, and a friend of his who is the president of NBC. Wow, yeah, if you can contact them mm. and get a report in Chicago. Um, yeah, and I've actually met the president of NBC several different times, so he'll know you'll, you'll know me. Him. So you yeah, can send exactly. him all your op-eds and maybe one of those groups might have an investigative reporter who would want to uh, take a look at how the airport has been functioning in a little bit more detail. Absolutely. Yeah, and if there is an opportunity to talk to someone high up at NBC, um, definitely figure out what the elevator pitch is, you know, don't just throw all the spaghetti at them. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I think we're going to need to go outside the community to get some attention from reporters because when I've talked to several of them, uh, because the airport spends so much money on advertising, they're told not to smell too, sniff too deep. By who do you think? By their, um, the people that own the uh, media outlets that they work for. Okay. Oh, brother. So I wouldn't count on either one of the Rockford News outlet, outlets to um, help us out as much because look at what the airport spends on advertising with them and they're not gonna jeopardize that. Because Mike yeah. would pull it in a heartbeat if something bad is said about him. Yeah. Great point, unfortunately. Um, one of the messages that we are saying to the governor's office is that they have 3.2, 3.6 million dollars uh, that has already been approved for this project. And the governor's office can say, we will give you this money if you reroute the road. Otherwise, we won't give you this money if the road is going to go through the prairie. So that is a specific ask to the contacts in the governor's office, especially those two deputy governors. Um, that I think really needs to be uh, continued to try to break through the, the noise. I also, um, through a friend, uh, communicated with the person that writes the grants for the Rockford Airport Authority, and he specifically has never been asked to write for the grant to, to reposition the road. I mean, he's just been told, nah, we don't need to. So uh, they could have done this a year ago. Oh, I mean. My. And they told them not to ask for, you know, it's like they don't, I mean, they they don't want to admit that they're wrong. And that comes down to the board. I mean, and, and it's mainly Paul and Mike Dunn that just would never admit that they maybe did something wrong. Any other questions? Also, you know, you can send, if you have questions about what you're writing and you want a little guidance, I'm sure Robbie and Jillian would be um, able to help you. Wordsmith. But the best thing is, you know, to have everything just come from your heart. Uh, so the media outreach is kind of being managed both by um, NLI and also uh, Jillian and Robbie. They're they're all kind of we're all working together. We have weekly strategy meetings. Uh, where our team gets together and we discuss all of these things and how best to um, target our efforts. And Matt Bowman is asking, what was that number again for the funding? We're looking for $20,000. Oh, I see. 3.6 million. I thought you meant funding NLI and... <laughs> well, 3.6 million for NLI <laughs> would be okay, you. too. Yeah, fine. I, yeah, I, I, would, <laughs> I would say that would be awesome. Yeah, 3.6 million is for the state. But also remember that the federal government uh, has appropriations and they could ask for something. Now that 3.6 million is for a lot of different projects. It's not gonna be just for one project. 
um, but the federal government has appropriations. Um, so that's that's good to know, Tyler. I don't want to get their grant writer in trouble, but it's good to know that um, they actually haven't been doing anything because we were wondering if they had been doing some grant writing or anything. Um, well, what Amy had heard, I th Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, it's that uh, they plan on paying for the road with um, tax dollars, with like Winnebago County tax dollars, and then asking to be reimbursed later through Rebuild Illinois funds, which is not how that program is supposed to work. Is that correct? Yeah, no. they didn't say specifically it would be the Rebuild Illinois funds, but they did say they planned on paying for it initially with local tax dollars that with their own bond issuance and then asking IDOT to reimburse them. And they told that to an IDOT investigator. Um, one of the other things that we have been kind of batting around, but it's a little expensive, is doing some billboards, uh, trying to get them to apply for this money to redesign the road. Uh, so if we did have some uh, some good donations, I don't know, for that, we probably need a couple of thousand dollars just for the billboards, I'm thinking. Um, so Anthony is asking about the younger wave in, involved. We've been working on that too. Um, Amy, do you wanna talk about uh, the schools and the Peoria schools and all that? Yeah, there's a teacher in Pontiac um, that has a group of high schoolers that are have been involved and they were actually pretty instrumental in getting thousands of postcards sent out. Um, and so the Pontiac High School students have been involved. And then Laura Stamp, and I cannot remember which middle school she's at. Um, I apologize, but she's had some middle schoolers that have created art. They've spoken to their local state legislators. Um, we would love to have, it would be great if we had some Winnebago County educators um, that were involved, um, but really it takes it takes the teachers to also have that initiative to, to step up and, and do that. But um, we do have a teacher kit. We've got um, the, the teacher in Pontiac, his students have actually, he and his students have said they are totally willing to jump on a Zoom and educate and, and help you know, those, any students that are interested in, um, in working with them and saying, here's what we did and here's how it worked. So um, if anybody's got some teachers, friends that might be interested in working on this, um, you can put them in touch with Rob or Jillian or me and we can get them connected with the Pontiac High School students as well. They'd love to love to do that. Um, I think NLI has also worked with some schools and I think Kim was going to be contacting those teachers as well. I know they did something about it at uh, Gloria Day um, because my friend's daughter went there and then she was very interested. So we went on a tour of Harlem Hills just to show them like what a, Ooh. not a gravel hill prairie, but a gravel prairie is. So we're at eight o'clock. And I think we started the meeting with a message of hope. Um, and I think we, you know, we, I'd love to just say, yeah, keep, keep going as long as we can. We don't need to be on Zoom to do it, but it's February 28th of 2023 and the prairie is still there. And so it, it does seem frustrating and it does seem sometimes that, it, you know, I think we all, spend so much time being frustrated at the that we're not that the airport is unresponsive or that this isn't how government works but the the prairie is still there and um i think a lot of us thought it was a long shot that it would still be there in fe late february of 2023 but i think this is this is how we how we get it to work that government isn't working the way it's supposed to right now but when we keep drawing attention to that and bringing it up in multiple places with so many people talking about it and advocating for it yeah um, i think it it this is how gov that is how government can get back to working like it's supposed to so rob matt is asking about an elevator pitch for press um 
I don't know if you want to share what you've done with everybody. I found that with, with the press, it like cold calls are not super great if you have a connection to a journalist and you know like what their interests are um you give them a lead and if they are interested they ask more questions and so you don't want to give them a ton of information um but there are examples of language that you could use that are on the website save double prairie.com or dot org um but yeah if you if you want you can write something and i can look at it and, and offer suggestions um but yeah it, i the, the the best is finding connections to actual journalists um also it is 802 um so, i am gonna finish yeah, my tweets um but yeah i think so I just want to thank everybody because what Amy said, we didn't know we would still be here uh, a year and a half later. And here we are, uh, the prairie is still there. And these kinds of efforts take persistence and they take a commitment. And we thank you all for being here tonight and for your persistence and your commitment to reaching out and sending tweets, emails, snail mails, postcards, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, talking with the groups that you're involved with, we are very grateful. So I think the publicity, I think the publicity that you've received in the last year and a half is is really outstanding. You know, been in Chicago Tribune, Chicago. Uh, television, local television, and so forth. It's it's really outstanding. It, it is. And we have the press. We have press contacts that when something happens, we tell them and they're on it. So we have a lot of press that are really on our side. And I think part of that is because we have made it very clear from the start that this is not an either or, this is a both and, that we're not trying to stop economic development in Rockford, but that with all of the 21st century designs, we can have both and. And I think everybody, everybody, the legislators, the press, everybody has told us how much they appreciate that approach because they feel they don't have to take sides. So thank you, everybody. And we hope to see you at the turnout at the April 15th meeting at the Prairie to welcome back the bees. Yeah, details forthcoming. Thank you all so much. You're great. Absolutely. Thank you. OK, bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. At, sorry, you couldn't join till later. <laughs> Pat, we had um, a speaker at the very beginning talk about hope for the prairie and then um, went into kind of an update about all the legal status. Uh, and then we went into a time of action, you know, people asking people right then to send their emails and their tweets and Facebook posts right then. Um, so that's kind of what we did for the meeting. Is it recorded? Can I hear it? Um, yep. Okay. I, I was.